I visited the novelist's apartment again. I'm hoping to be able to do something about this mistaken identity kidnapping. As long as there's any possibility that it could be his own daughter who was kidnapped, I doubt the Justice Minister will call off the execution tonight. The key to dispelling the Minister's doubts is now in bed, coughing, and I need to use this key before that prison van arrives to pick up our death row inmate. My darling angel, oh, just listen to that cough. You naughty little thing. Did you leave your nice warm bed to go out into the night to play? A daughter after my own heart, but I must confess I didn't even notice you were gone. I didn't go out to play. I went to buy Papa a birthday present. He said he wanted a new lighter. But that's no reason to go out this late at night. But my fever finally went down. I could barely move before that. But look what it brought you. Your fever is worse than ever now. Here's to the feverish passion of my darling angel. Mama? Yes, darling. Let's call Papa and wish him a happy birthday, even though it's already past midnight. Not tonight, Amelie. I hate you! Looks like this little girl was safe all along. I already knew that, but I'm still relieved all the same. And there's another lucky development here, too. Amelie wants to call her father. Now if I can just make use of that feeling somehow, that will surely bring the Justice Minister around. Hello guys and welcome to TGM the Game Nerd the Show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we confirmed pretty much everything we already knew with Jowd over at the uh, Justice Minister's office and we realized that the best way to try to stop this was to go over to his daughter and see if we can go over to the Justice Minister's daughter and see if we can get her to call him and if you want to know why that's important to get uh, Amelie to call her father go ahead and check out some of the previous episodes it'd be weird if you jumped in at episode 13 uh, Amelie I told you you couldn't call him tonight why not listen to me Amelie your father is about to make a big mistake I want him to reconsider what do you know about it mama he's the one who's the justice minister you know all you do is write weird novels What do you mean, weird? How dare you disparage my romantic expressions? Now you've really made me angry. You really have! Do you expect me to forgive such an insult? I hate you. There. I'll be keeping my eye on you now, so you won't do anything else mischievous, like calling your father. I hate you. I can hear you, you know. That was certainly something. Whoa, what a pair. I don't know what this family's issues are, but I knew, do know I have to do something about this lady so Amelie can call. Yeah, that was certainly... something. <laughs> Oh, Amelie said something. Oh, it's just coughing. Well, well. Having a good time, are we, little rodent? Sweet dreams. Did you fancy the vintage, my whiskered friend? Thank you. 
So if we can't spook her off with rodents, what else can we do? Well, there are a few things we can go ahead and do. If we move this rat over here... Oh heavens, a blackout at the critical time like this? Of course, dim lights suit my story of love very well, but I myself am not very fond of the dark. The chandelier just narrowly missed the back of my head. I love the thrill of romance, but I don't need these kinds of thrills, thank you. Ah, what a wonderful atmosphere. Perfect for a clandestine meeting in the dusky twilight. She knows how to make the best of a bad situation. Uh, I don't exactly know how this situation came about, but I think I owe that rat an apology. Rat seems to be unconscious, but now that the room has changed into this, maybe I can use it somehow. Indeed we can. Let's go ahead and open this up. And let's... Turn this crank. What a naughty chandelier. Now I want to see if I can... Ah, come on. Such insolence. So we're trying to have it fall directly on top of her. Amelie! Amelie, help me! Mama! I'm sorry, Mama. I'm too dizzy. I can't get up. I'm afraid I can't help you right now. <laughs> Here's the weakness of my darling angel. That chandelier is on there tighter than her wedding band. She won't be able to escape on her own. Help! 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 What? What is going on? Amelie, look! Do you see this? Help me, please! Uh, I'm sorry. I'm too sick. I can't get out of bed. My head is spinning, so I guess you'll just have to stay up there spinning too. Looks like this lady won't be going anywhere for a while. Now the little girl can call her father. The only trouble is she can't reach it. I guess I'll just have to deliver it to her. Oh, that's right. The angle of those candles. I saw something very similar just recently, didn't I? So now that she's trapped, we kind of have free reign of the place, and now we can get it... Excuse me, we can... Get the phone to Amelie without her having to interrupt. I wonder what happens if I... There we go. Ah, I see her. So we burn that brighter. And after that... The rat's tail is set on fire. Now I really owe that poor rat an apology. This might be a really good chance for me, too. I have to get that phone to Amelie. If we swing, swing this pendulum harder... Mama! What in the world is going on here? Oh, goody. Excuse me a minute while I call Papa, okay, Mama? 
I'll only be a minute. Ah! Don't you dare, Amelie! I won't have it! So now that she's freaking out, we can go ahead and assure that the execution won't be carried out. Hello, Papa? <gasps> Amelie! Is that you? Of course it is, silly. What did you think? But I heard they said you were. No, never mind. It's nothing. Silly old Papa. Happy birthday, Papa. Birthday? Oh, right. It was my birthday today, wasn't it? I'm sorry we couldn't celebrate tonight. Thanks to mean old Mama. Oh, your mean old Mama. I mean, your mother. Where? What is she up to right now? Well, she's certainly up all right. My stubborn mother is kind of tied up at the moment. Get me down! She needs to be taught a lesson for causing us so much trouble. No, Amelie. I'm the one who is wrong. Huh? Could you tell your mother that I'm sorry? What do you have to be sorry about? I was just about to make a terrible mistake. But it's all right now. Oh. Okay. You're still young. There's a lot I can tell you right now. The job of a justice minister is very complicated, you see. Okay. But just remember, you're always the most important thing to your mother and me. Did you do something naughty to your mother? If you did, I want you to apologize. I don't think I did anything. But okay, I'll apologize. That's a good girl. Okay, Papa. Have a good night. I love you. I love you too, Amelie. Good night, sweetheart. Um, Mama? I'm sorry. My goodness, why the sudden change? I, I guess I was wrong about you. I didn't understand. Oh, Amelie. I thought all you ever did was write those weird novels. That makes me a little sad. Papa said the job of Justice Minister was complicated. Yes, your father's job is very, very complicated. That's why I couldn't talk to you about most of it. But you're alright. I shouldn't treat you like such a little girl anymore. You're growing up after all. And I promise to stop calling your novels weird and try actually reading them. What? Oh, uh... Maybe you'd better wait until you're a little older for that. Tch, okay. So, Amelie, if you're feeling a little more charitable toward your old mama, do you think you could let me down now? No, I would love to do that. But I'm just feeling too dizzy and sick right now. Tonight on this holiest of nights, my deadline. It looks like the only thing pressing on me will be the chandelier. Here's the Papa and Mama's darling angel. All of a sudden, everybody is getting along again. It's such an abrupt change, I can't understand it. Is this what family is all about? In any case, the situation has changed dramatically now. I just hope the mysteries of me can be cleared up as quickly as the furrows on the minister's brow. I don't know where Camilla is. But at least now the Justice Minister's doubts are dispelled. I think I'll go back to his office where everybody is waiting for the prison van. The Minister's family now has their smiles and their harmony back, but Camilla is still in, hands, in the hands of the kidnappers. I decide to go back to the Justice Minister's office. Surprisingly, the Minister's brow is still just as furrowed as ever. Quite unlike a father who's just learned his daughter is safe, he seems to still be in the depths of despair. The atmosphere in this room is very different now. It seems to have an air of unfocused anxiety. I get the feeling something big is going to happen. I just found out that my daughter is safe. I like to express my gratitude. Thank you. Thank you for my daughter's sake and for mine. No need to thank us, Mr. Minister. It was nothing. 
What did he do? But just one question. I can't help but notice. Your daughter is safe. And yet you still look a little unhappy. How about a little smile for us? <laughs> of course, there's still the matter of the other kidnapping victim. But is that really the only thing that troubles you, Mr. Minister? Please let me think in peace until the prison van arrives. Thought bubble. I wonder if Lynn is at the park yet. Until we get a report, I guess I'll just have to wait here. The continued distress of the ministers. Is there really something more to it, like the inspector in white said? Hello, Mr. Justice Minister. How about you finally admit I do exist? That thing you expressed, it was meant for you. You're a ghost, aren't you? You have the power to control and manipulate people, don't you? No, I don't have that kind of power. I can't control you. We've actually known you know, for quite a while now, but I had no idea they were the powers of the dead, of ghosts. Known? Known about what? We know about the existence of somebody who could control others, a manipulator. What's this? That's why your execution order caused me so much anguish, Detective Jared. Mr. Minister, why don't you just tell us of everything you know? Yes, I suppose I should. You need to hear it all about the huge mistake this foolish man made. There are some cases in this country right now that are under a top secret investigation. Of course you wouldn't have known about them, Detective Jowd. Right, they don't share too much top secret information with the inmates in prison. There are three prisoners, including you, in the special prison you just escaped from. All three cases have certain points in common. They do, do they? Tell us more. The rock singer who leaked national secrets in his lyrics during a TV broadcast. The curry-loving fellow who took the chief commissioner hostage at the Metro Police Department. Neither of these men had a motive for their crime, and both of their crimes were impossible. Impossible. The curry lover had no way of knowing how to infiltrate the commissioner's office, and the rock singer had no way of knowing the national secrets he leaked. The special investigation unit submitted an investigative report to me on them. They concluded that these men's criminal acts were not of their own volition. But how could that be? The theory the unit came up with was the existence of a manipulator. Manipulator, huh? That's when the special prison was established as a facility to research that theory. Some unknown power has been at work. These past several years, Inspector Cabanela has been studying these cases. He has, has he? Manipulating somebody into committing a criminal act, according to the inspector. The first case of its kind was a locked room murder involving a nation's back best detective. Are you trying to say I was manipulated somehow into shooting Alma? I appreciate the theory, but unfortunately, I don't recall being controlled by anybody. It's just not possible to manipulate another's behavior like that. My powers certainly don't work on living creatures. That's what I thought when I first heard the theory too. However, I was seriously mistaken and proved to be a big mistake. What? You mentioned a mistake. Could you tell us about it? I suppose everybody here has the right to know. All right, fine. I'll speak out loud so that Inspector Cabanella can hear this too. There is something I'd like the, the two of you to hear. It's about a mistake I made. Inspector Cabanella. When you first made that report about a manipulator, I'm afraid I didn't believe it at all. Impossible, I thought. 
Perfectly understandable, Mr. Minister. But I was wrong. That kind of power does exist. And I... I learned the truth of that firsthand. What's this? A month ago, I signed the order to carry out Detective Jowd's execution. However, that act wasn't of my own volition. I was being controlled. What? You never told me about this, Mr. Minister. What's going on th this document? What am I doing? No, I mustn't sign it. Wait, don't deliver that document. That's when it started. That's when all of my fear, despair, and suffering began. At the time, it didn't even cross my mind that I had been manipulated, and my memory of the event was only hazy at best. Hmm, so the memory of, the, of being manipulated doesn't clearly remain, eh? Shining execution orders is a part of the Justice Minister's job. At the time, I thought my psyche was rebelling against the task. But the next day it dawned on me, I remembered Inspector Cabanella's report on the existence of a manipulator. And uh, as a Minister of Justice, I couldn't admit what had happened to me. I only signed the execution order because I was being controlled. If something like that got out, the nation's judicial system would crumble. Besides, I had no evidence to present that I had actually been controlled. So in the end, I couldn't admit to anybody what had happened. Hmm, I suppose. But it sounds like a bit of an excuse. You could have at least told us, Mr. Minister. Yes, yes, I know I should have. I was running away from the problem. And then my wife found out I was worried about something. Well, if you go around with an expression like that, I guess it's bound to happen. I explained it to her, and she was dead set against the way I was handling it. If you don't withdraw that order and tell everyone the truth immediately, I'm moving out. And then, with the kidnapping tonight, with it thrust under my nose like that, I could no longer deny my mistake. This manipulator comes upon us from somewhere unseen. That's why I've been keeping my distance from everybody. So that's why you've been telling people to stay back. So there's somebody else besides me with the powers of the dead. I'm fine with that. After all, I already knew about a certain desk lamp. What I'm not fine with is the fact that that person can control and manipulate living creatures. That's certainly not something I can do. Apparently, different ghosts get different ghost tricks. But I never imagined that tonight, I would find out where this kind of power comes from. Where it comes from? Inspector Cabanla. This manipulator is a ghost. A departed spirit. A spirit? As a matter of fact, there's a ghost talking to us right now. What? What did you say? Jow, don't tell me you hear this ghost too. I'd say the only person who can't hear him is you. Spirit, ghost, God's in heaven. Excuse me, Mr. Minister. I suddenly have some urgent business to attend to. I recommend that you think long and hard before making your final decision, sir. Inspector! This is Lynn. I'm at the park. We've been waiting to hear from you. Have you found the evidence? 
Well, uh, the situation here is... it's kind of hard to explain. Sissel, if you're there, come to the park immediately. It looks like your help is needed, Sissel. Yeah, I guess so, huh? Lynn calls and I oblige. I take off towards Temsic Park, the place where clearly something big is taking place. The Manipulator, the person whose very existence sheds new light on everything. Detective Jowd's crime, the execution orders, and even my own death. Could it be? Could Lynn have been manipulated into shooting me?